I welcome you all to the DBMCI channel. I am myself, Dr. Rajesh Guba. I am the general medicine educator and a cardiologist. So as a part of daily discussion of the clinical ECGs, today I am discussing the clinical ECG number 6. So before going ahead with the session, let me just give you this small information that on 29th of January, I am discussing the entire ECG all the way from basics to the advanced level. And in this particular session, I'll give you a detailed explanation of the individual waves and I will be also discussing the clinical emergencies like myocardial infarction, sudden cardiac death, cardiac tamponade, ventricular arrhythmias. So all these clinical emergencies you will be able to diagnose once you attend this particular session. And this session will be on eGurukul app and it will be a live session. A recorded version of this particular session will not be available. And this session on 29th of January will be from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Having said this, let me just go ahead with the clinical scenario of the day. So we have a 28 year old man. He came to the casualty after collapsing at the local swimming pool. He reports that last thing he remembers is getting out of the pool. The lifeguard said he felt very rapid pulse immediately after the event. And he was brought to the casualty on examination in emergency. He is beginning to rouse. He is awake. He is in sinus rhythm. And QTC, that is corrected QT interval on the ECG is around 0.5 second. On further questioning, it appears he was brought up by his aunt and uncle. His father died suddenly when the patient was a small child. What is the most likely cause of his collapse? The options are JLN1 mutation, JLN2 mutation, long QT, LQT1 mutation, LQT2 mutation, LQT3 mutation. And this is the ECG of the patient. Now, you should know what is the abnormality within the ECG first. If you take the rhythm, it is the sinus rhythm. You have a beautiful PQRST. But if you take the QT interval, the QT interval, it is being prolonged. How much is the normal QT interval? Normal QT interval is 360 to 440 milliseconds. But our patient is having a prolonged QT of nearly around 500 milliseconds. Now, a long QT interval is the one which can progress to the development of polymorphic ventricular tachycardia and wherein the individual may have the collapse. So, if you see the important points of the history in this patient, collapse at the swimming pool, that is a very important clinical history. There is also family history of sudden death. And third important is the long QT interval. These three are the important points in the history. Now, the presence of the family history of the sudden death tells you that it is a congenital disorder causing long QT interval. Now, what are those congenital disorders where you have long QT syndrome or long QT interval? One is romano -Ward syndrome and the other one is the gerwell lange nielsen syndrome. Now, among these two, one should be there in this patient. Our patient is having romano -Ward syndrome. Now the question is, why not gerwell lange nielsen syndrome? Why? Because in patients with gerwell lange nielsen syndrome, they have associated deafness. But our patient does not give any history of deafness. So that is the reason why the congenital long QT syndrome without deafness, you need to consider the romano ward syndrome. Now, if you see few points regarding this romano ward, there are totally six mutations that have been identified in association with the development of this Romano ward. Out of these six mutation, LQT1, LQT2, these two are the mutations that will make up around 87% of cases. Now, because of this particular mutation, the abnormality will be in the cardiac potassium channel gene mutation. Having said this, let me tell you what will be the clinical features. The clinical features in these individuals will be, the individual can present with sudden cardiac death. And this sudden cardiac death usually will be during the exercise or emotional stress 
or even at rest or even at sleep. So why there will be sudden cardiac death? Because these patients with the long QT, they will progress to the development of polymorphic ventricular tachycardia. And that is the one which will make the individual to have a sudden cardiac death. Now, in symptomatic individuals, like for example, an individual had a syncopal attack. Those symptomatic individuals, there is high risk of sudden cardiac death in these patients with the congenital long QT syndrome. Out of which, which particular subtype is having highest risk of sudden cardiac death? We have LQT 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Out of which, LQT 3 is the one which has the highest risk of sudden cardiac death. Whereas, LQT4, it is associated with paroxysmal atrial fibrillation in the sense sudden onset atrial fibrillation. And you take LQT1, LQT1, these individuals, they have the cardiac events preceded by a swimming. That means whenever the individual's face is exposed to a cold water, immediately there will be elicitation of vagotonic reflex and that will further cause prolonged QT and that will progress to polymorphic ventricular tachycardia wherein the individual can present with a syncopal attack. Whereas long QT2, the triggering event is the emotional event exercise or exposure to auditory stimuli. Whereas long QT1, the triggering event was exposure to cold water. Whereas long QT3 is the one which occurs during the sleep as well. So this is about some important points on the subtypes of the long QT, which is nothing but your Romano ward. Now, what is the investigation of choice? Let me tell you, ECG itself is not the investigation of choice because sometimes the ECG may be normal. So that is the reason why the whole term monitoring for 24 hours is being recommended to confirm the diagnosis of this long QT syndrome. And what is the drug of choice? The drug of choice is that we give Sotalol, which is nothing but the beta blocker. But with the drugs itself, the individual treatment will not be sufficient. Then what is the treatment of choice? Treatment of choice in these patients with the long QT will be implantable cardioverter defibrillator that we call it as ICD. So this ICD is what they do is they will ablate if there is any abnormal ventricular arrhythmia which is originating. So implantable defibrillators are also used in the management of these particular patients. Having said this, if you see this question now, in this question, what do you think is the answer for the long QT? It is long QT1 mutation right long QT1 mutation because the individual has a triggering event of swimming and I said you the swimming is the one which will trigger the long QT1 mutation. So the answer is C in this particular patient and let me tell you not only congenital disorders there are certain drugs which will cause the long QT syndrome. Now I will give you a mnemonic for the drugs causing the long QT that the mnemonic is A, B, C, D, E. A stands for anti-arrhythmic drugs, another A is anti-anginal, B stands for antibiotics, C stands for antipsychotics. This is for mnemonic sake, I have just made it like that, okay? But because antipsychotic spelling is not exactly the same, D stands for antidepressants, another D is your diuretics, E stands for anti-emetics. So in this way, you can remember the drugs which will cause the long QT interval. So this is the clinical case of the day. So I will be teaching you the entire ECG all the way from basics, right? I will tell you the concept behind each and every line which is coming on the ECG paper. So that is what I will be discussing on 29th of January, all the way from basics to the advanced level. Attending this session will be definitely useful to all the practicing people, not only practicing people, as an MBBS doctor, you should be able to make out simple basic ECGs like MI, Ardhinias. These are the very important thing if you can recognize, you will be saving the life of the patient. Thank you very much and see you in the next clinical ECG tomorrow.